Hello friends and family. Okay, so finally the video you've been waiting for. Um, this this weekend um, on Friday I went skiing in the Alps, another thing that was on my bucket list, um, and I also got to go to Prague. Now I have a couple of stories that go along with each trip which if you've looked through my pictures and some of the captions of the pictures, it says to tune into this video for those stories. So, I have them for you today, and I hope you enjoy. So, first of all, um, skiing, skiing, skiing. What were the two stories I had about skiing? I feel like I had two stories about skiing and three stories about Prague. Uh, well, I guess I'll just start off with a story that I can remember. Okay, skiing. It was very, very windy, <laughs> um, incredibly windy. Um, I didn't have my goggles. There was frozen rain. Uh, it was, it was bad. <laughs> I mean, it was good. Skiing was good, but it was just kind of tricky, you know, when you can't see. So Nathan and I, Nathan is one of my good friends here, and he, it was his first time ever skiing, and he picked it up really fast. So we went even to... There's three mountains with, and each mountain has like the, like a beginner run, intermediate run, and like a black, whatever, diamond, I guess you could say run. So we went to the tops of two mountains, and we did the easy and intermediate runs on both those mountains. So Nathan and I decided to make the trek over to the third mountain and do the easy slash intermediate runs on that mountain. We did a couple easy runs, and so he asked, like, you know, do you want to do one of the intermediate runs? And I was like, yeah, sure. So we're skiing, and it's it's fine. There's a couple of steep parts, but for the most part, it's, you know, whatever, intermediate. And um, then there's the frozen rain, and the wind picks up, and it's getting kind of hard to see. And Nathan is like, do you want to try and go back, or do you want to just continue this run? Well, it's kind of hard to go back on a ski run on account of you're going down a hill. So I was like, well, it would probably be easiest to just finish the run. Otherwise, we're going to have to pop our skis off and walk, you know, back to where all the trails merge if we wanted to do something else. So we decided to keep going with the run. So we're going and we're going and all of a sudden we get to this point the, where we see the skiers and snowboarders in front of us, like, it's like a drop-off. <laughs> They're disappearing downwards, and we're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> like, what, what, what is this, you know? So we go a little bit more forward, and it's pretty much like a wall. Like, maybe it's like this, like, just barely, like, we're, we're right here, on top of snow and then it just all of a sudden it's like a drop off like it's kind of slanted because obviously you know it's it's not like you would jump off of it but it's like you know you're going down this really steep it's if you've ever been to Big Bear I'm pretty sure not I don't think it's Snow Summit I think it might actually be Big Bear there is a double black diamond course called the wall let me tell you it made that look like a bunny slope like this was literally the wall and it was it was just insane so I start I start like crying I'm afraid of heights a lot of people don't really know that about me I'm I'm afraid of spiders I'm afraid of heights and I'm afraid of the dark so I start tearing up not like crying crying but definitely he can tell I'm upset so Nathan is trying to even though he's scared out of his mind because he's only been skiing, this is his first time ever skiing. He tells me, "Don't worry, you've been skiing since you were like ten. We're gonna get, we're gonna get through this. Like, you know, we've done other scarier things today, which I'll tell you in a minute. Like, we're gonna be fine. Let's just, let's just do it. Like, we'll get it over with." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's do it. Let's get it over with." So I say, "After you." So Nathan goes, and so I start following his trail. And then all of a sudden, like, I look, I look up ahead of me because I'm like, where is Nathan? And I don't see him. And so I look, like, down because, you know, that's how steep it is. And I see skis 
like flying and poles flying and I see Nathan like trying to hold on to this cliff for dear dear life and he is sliding down like I, I'm telling everybody it's like Mufasa like on Pride Rock can't hold on like he's trying but I mean he's just flying down this incline and so I'm like oh my gosh like I should ski down there and get his skis and his poles for him otherwise there's no way like, this is the face of a mountain. He's not going to be able to climb back up it. He can't even stop himself from falling or sliding. So my muscles are starting to cramp up because it takes a crazy amount of control to go down this hill slowly because it's basically flat. Luckily, the super nice German snowboarder picks up all of Nathan's stuff. And Nathan has, like, built up enough snow because he's been, you know, he's been sliding down. So the snow has like built up enough under his feet to where he's almost created a little shelf and he's like stuck on there. And this nice snowboarder comes and brings him um, all his stuff. And Nathan is like not moving. So I decide, you know what? Forget this. I'm going to pop off my skis and I'm going to walk. Well, the thing about the face of a mountain is that you can't walk down it. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking my boots were not, I, I don't know. Anyways, I pop off my skis like an idiot, and the second I do that, I start I start flying down the mountain, and I'm holding on to my skis because I was, I don't know, at least smart enough to uh, grab them before I start sliding down the mountain. And, um, yeah, it's just crazy. I'm sliding. I'm, you know, like, terrified. I'm, like, screaming. You have no control over falling. You know what I mean? Free falling, pretty much. Free sliding, I guess, down the face of this mountain. But finally, I build up enough snow to create a little shelf for myself as well. So Nathan and I are both panting. We're both on these little shelves. And he was like, yeah, I don't recommend walking down the mountain. It's really slippery. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. Then we see our friend Tim. He's on his back like a cockroach, sliding headfirst down the mountain with his snowboard in the air. It's the first time he's ever snowboarded. And he's like, somebody help me. We're like terrified for Tim's life as we watch him come flying down this incline. Yeah, it was scary. Finally, though, um, Mark Calpagian, he is the director of student life at the university, somehow found us on the run, and he, the professional that he is, he helped me get back into my skis magically, and I was very thankful for that. So, second story, second ski story that was really scary. There's this thing called a T-lift, okay? And it's basically these bars. There's a bar right here, and there's a bar right here, and then there's a cable um, that, that leads up to the other cable that's attached to a pulley that pulls you up the mountain. If that makes any sense at all, I have a picture of it on my Facebook that is probably a lot more self-explanatory. So what happens is, here's, here's the bar, okay, just imagine this because I need my other hand. Um, and what you do is you, you stand in front of it and the bar comes up from behind you and, and it pushes you up the mountain. Now usually you would see this on a bunny slope. Um, because you don't, you don't need to actually hop in a chair to go on a bunny slope, right? Um, so this would kind of tug you along. Not the Austrian way. <laughs> um, they had a T-lift to pull you up an entire mountain. So sometimes you're going up a mountain and you're holding for dear life onto this cable and all you have is a little pole, um, up against your butt, um, that's propelling you forward. It was so terrifying. Um, so me and my friend decide, okay, like, I'll get on this side of the pole, and you can get on this side of um, the pole. Well, you know, we're supposed to rest both our butts up against this pole. She actually, like, leaned too much to one side and, like, flipped around and, like, fell off <laughs> the T-lift. So I'm holding on to it for dear life, and there's this guy. He shouts something to me in German while laughing. <laughs> so I can only assume he was making fun of me, but I was terrified, to say the least. So... Um, yes, yeah, so when we were on that, that steep incline and the story I told you just before this, Nathan was like, you, you made the, up the T-lift, like, you can do anything, you made it up the T-lift. Um, but, but alas, he was mistaken because I did slide down that whole cliff. So, um, yes, compared to the United States, the Austrians are much more extreme, uh, in their snow sports, which is to be expected, but you know what, I really hadn't experienced anything above my skill level until that point and that was near the end of the day so so whatever anyways that was my skiing adventure um let's see we're up to nine minutes okay so Prague 
really, really, really amazing city. Um, I got to see the Infant of Prague. Um, there's a whole story on it. I, I put a link in the caption of the picture of the infant. Um, and it was really nice. We got to go to Mass in that church, and I got to sit next to the Infant of Prague during the whole Mass. So that was really good. It was in Spanish, so I could understand the majority of it. So that was a really cool experience. Now, the John Lennon Peace Wall. I really want to talk about that because that's something people really don't know about at all. Um, as you know, the Czech Republic used to be super, super communist. And people were getting thrown in jail for listening to the Beatles. So a bunch of rebellious teenagers started graffitiing this wall with the lyrics from the Beatles, portraits of John Lennon, etc., etc. And the, the government would keep painting over it. Um, but then people would keep graffitiing it. And so the government put up surveillance cameras, everything. Um, and, and somehow these teenagers would keep graffitiing this wall. And they even threw some people in jail for that as well, you know, if they got caught. Um, but then, then the government just kind of, you know, they thought it's, you know, it's futile. They're going to keep doing this anyways. Um, so that was kind of like their one, you know, symbolism of freedom and, and everything that they wanted, uh, was on this wall. So the wall has been, um, you know, the city of Prague has allowed this wall to continue to be graffitied, um, and, and maintained, uh, ever since then, you know, so it's just kind of interesting to see, you know, obviously they're not, um, communists anymore, but it's, um, it was just really cool, you know, the, the things that you, you do in desperation for, for freedom or to have your voice, um, it was just, it was cool to see, um, that, and we got to make our own contributions to the wall, um, me and my friends wrote our initials, um, I wrote a thing for my household, um, a lot of you guys know I'm in a household, it's kind of like sorority, um, if you have questions on that, you can message me. But anyways, we, um, yeah, so my household sisters and I drew um, the Bible verse that's associated with our household and, and stuff like that. So that was really, really cool. Um, then, <laughs> it was so freezing in Prague. It was really, really cold. And um, we, Mary and I, have been always, like in every city, it's been cold. I mean, it's just cold. <laughs> And in every city, Mary and I have been jokingly talking about how we want chocolate, but we also want to be warm. So we've come up with things like jacuzzi full of chocolate, chocolate fondue, chocolate dipped in chocolate, liquid hot chocolate. So, you know, we we uh, did this in Prague, you know. Oh my gosh, I wish I just had liquid hot chocolate, like melted chocolate. And sure enough, we walk past this booth, and what is this guy selling? Liquid hot chocolate. We flip out and in in the Czech Republic they don't take well in most they're not supposed to take euros because they're not a part of um, the EU. They take um, Czech crowns or something whatever it's called Czech crowns I'm pretty sure. So we go up to this guy we're like please we didn't want to exchange any money because it's kind of a ripoff and so we're like do you take euros and he was like uh-huh so we all are able to get our hot melted chocolate all right, I got about two minutes left, and I just want to tell you the story real fast. We were looking for a place to eat, and we went into this restaurant, and it was a really weird restaurant. It had portraits of, like, naked mermaids, like, all over the place, and it was really, really weird. But we were so desperate for food that we are like, whatever, let's just eat here. First of all, I told the waiter I wanted just a side of french fries. I didn't want him to bring me anything else but a side of french fries. Because this place had calzones, pasta, pizza, everything that I basically cannot eat. So I ordered a Coke and a side of french fries. And that was going to cost me probably around four euro equivalent. Um, they had the euros written down on the menu. Anyways, I never get my french fries. So I think, you know what, it's just a misunderstanding. I don't feel like it, like trying to fight with the waiter. English isn't his first language, whatever. We get the check. It winds up being way more expensive than we think it is. And we're like, what's the deal? We thought that one euro was 25 crowns. And he's like, no, no, it's 20 crowns to one euro. And they're like, okay, well... We still, on the menu, it has the euro conversion here, and it's not matching up to the price. You know, your menu prices are not matching up to our receipt. And he goes, uh, the menu is old, so the prices are higher now. Sorry. And we're like, okay. So basically, we got totally ripped off in Prague. Um, I didn't get my french fries. I wound up paying around four euro just for a glass of Coca-Cola. It was pretty unfortunate, but hey, you know what? It made for a good story for this video. So, um, anyways, those were my adventures of skiing in the Alps and Prague. Um, 
It was great to see the infant of Prague, especially since my household is a devotion to the child Jesus. So that was really the highlight of my trip. I got back around 1 a.m. the next morning. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, I'm going to Poland next weekend, so just keep checking my Facebook for updates on that, and I'll have a video next week. God bless.